How's everybody doing? Happy Wednesday to you. I don't know where you're tuning in from around the world, so it could very well be Thursday morning. In any event, hello to everyone. My name is Sebastian Rusk. I am the podcaster, uh, author, speaker, and the founder of the podcast LaunchLab.com, which is a turnkey podcast launch solution to help you go from idea to iTunes in 90 days or less by starting your own podcast. Today, I'm here to talk to you about what's possible by starting a podcast and solving all of your social media content problems at the same time. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm going to break it down. We're going to start with the basics of what it takes to actually start a podcast so that I can add some context to that because I know a lot of you may be here uh, to figure out what it takes to start a podcast and in addition to that, how you're going to be able to solve all of your social media content problems. So before we dig in, I want to give you a quick 30,000 foot perspective and some context on myself so you know who you're dealing with for the next few minutes here as I share a couple things that I believe uh, are possible in the realm of podcasting and your social media content strategy as a whole. So I started my brand about 11 years ago, originally started with my first company, Social Buzz TV, which was a turnkey Uh, digital solution for brands to be educated uh, and also put into action uh, some social media marketing for their business. Fast forward to to 2016, uh, I did a strong pivot uh, because I knew that I wanted to get a little more granular and find my place in this very vast world of social media. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of action. uh, And I knew that I wanted to find my specific place. And I always like to say that, oh, podcasting, found me. And as luck would have it, I was able to achieve my objective of being able to stay in the digital space, the social media space, while being able to really, really, really niche down into the world of podcasting. As luck would have it, I actually grew up in a radio station. My dad was a DJ for 30 years, and I would uh, exchange time on the weekends cutting tracks for a happy meal. Uh, Lucky me. Little did I know that I'd end up in the world of podcasting, the audio space, if you will, didn't really have a giant desire to follow in my dad's footsteps. But like a friend had told me on the golf course a few months back when I was sharing this story, boy, Sebastian, our genes sure are powerful, aren't they? So that was back in 2016 that I made that strong pivot into the world of podcasting, launched the podcast, Launch Lab. And I have been beating that drum ever since. It has been the road less traveled, even though podcasting is 20 years old. But at the same time, I knew with everything that I had, that podcasting was here to stay. If we look at where we're at with this audio era that we've entered into with artificial intelligence and Alexa and Google Voice and everything else you can speak into existence, it's clear that podcasting really aligns with that process and where we're at and where we're headed. It also fits in the process of replacing radio, traditional radio, as we know it. I don't know about you, but nobody's in a hurry to get in their car and turn on the traditional radio and tune into a traditional radio station only to hear a bunch of redundant, untargeted, irrelevant advertisements talking over the same song that they play over and over and over again. Podcasting allows us to remove a lot of that friction so that we can just cater to exactly the content that we want to consume. So that's how I got to where I'm at. I've been working away at building my personal brand in my businesses for the past 11 years. And I still feel every day like I'm just getting started because there's always something new, always something changing within the space, but podcasting has become my life's work. I know that because I would do it for free if money didn't exist, but thank God uh, it does. So that's a little bit about me. Let's dig right into it. I want to start with the basics, if you will, the basics of how to start a podcast. What does it take to actually start a podcast? Well, I'm glad you asked. Before we do that, though, I want for you to take a second And just imagine, imagine for a second, close your eyes if you have to, we're all virtual here. If you're not driving, close your eyes and just imagine for a minute what's possible. What is possible with getting your podcasting strategy in place? What is possible 
with achieving all of your social media content goals by starting a podcast. What does starting a podcast look like for you, your brand, your business, your life, your family? Maybe there's a few things like I've mentioned here, new business, more exposure. Who doesn't need that? Consistent content. Well, if you've got a strategy in place for your podcast, you're going to be consistent with creating content for your podcast. New relationships. My goodness, we'd be here till next January. Well, that's not too far off. Maybe next July. If I shared all the incredible opportunities that have come my way just based on me showing up, remaining consistent, and building bridges consistently by developing new relationships that come through the means of sitting down and having an intelligent conversation while being casual at the same time with people that I don't know, but I want to know. People that I want to productively pick their brain. People who I want to build rapport with. I want to tell their story. I want to develop a relationship. And, and I want to do all of these things within a timely fashion. What an incredible way to do that to the means of a podcast interview. So again, I, I ask you to ask yourself and just imagine for a moment what's possible. So keep that in mind. I want you to imagine what's possible over the next few minutes that we're going to spend together of me being able to help you better understand what you don't know that you don't know about the world of podcasting, but in addition to that, what the world of podcasting can do to unlock your social media content strategy, goals, objectives, et cetera. But, but why? Why start a podcast? Well, I don't know. That's entirely up to you. You starting a podcast, the reason for you starting a podcast is entirely up to you and has nothing to do with me, just for the simple fact that I can't create your why for you. I can't enroll you into the process of your why. I can tell you how to identify your why. It's usually more times than not, it's associated with your passion. Sebastian, how in the world do I know what my passion is if I don't know what my why is? Well, maybe you haven't discovered what your passion is yet. Maybe you haven't discovered what your why is yet. But I'm here to tell you today, when you get out of bed every single morning and your feet at the floor, and you get that really exciting feeling in your stomach of, yeah, if I could just do that today, if I could just do that forever, well, that would get me excited. That would make me happy. That would make me fulfilled. I don't know what that is for you. That's your job to figure out. But I can tell you, it's going to be an extension of service. It's going to be an extension of showing up 100% of yourself to the people that are assigned to you in your life. I'm along the belief system that there is no doubt that there is a calling on each and every one of our lives. And along with that calling is a laundry list of individuals that we're assigned to. Kind of a tall order. May sound a little woo-woo for you. Hey, hold on a second. I thought we we're talking about business and podcasting. Yes, we are. We most definitely are. But how common, how many commonalities do podcasting, business, entrepreneurship, content creation, creativeness, how many of those things apply to life? Well, we're talking about why you should start a podcast and figuring out your why of anything requires knowing that you need to be in service to something, to someone. You've got to, you, you've got to have your dream attached to someone else's dream. That's a great place to start. You can call it woo-woo, you can call it whatever you want. You need to get clear on why you're doing what you're doing. Because when you do that, you're able to create leverage on yourself. Leverage on yourself, meaning every time you don't feel like it, you go back to the original idea of why you started in the first place get clear on that why, you anchor yourself in that why, and you remember that it has nothing to do with you, but it's all about your community and who you're serving, your audience, et cetera. So get clear on that why. If you're not right now, that's okay. You've only got a lifetime to figure it out, but you need to be clear on your why because it's going to create momentum and leverage for you ongoing. This podcasting thing, any content creation thing, anything worthwhile doing 
is no easy task and you're never going to feel like it. You're not. You're going to have to create momentum for yourself and leverage on yourself in order to maintain uh, what you've set out to do. And usually that comes with getting real clear about your why and, and knowing that you're serving an, an, an audience and a community to the best of your ability. I want to share something with you real quick that may sound like the obvious, may sound a little woo-woo, I don't care. I want to give you permission today to do whatever it is that you've had that hunch, you've had that nudge, you had that idea, you woke up in the middle of the night and you thought to yourself, well, what about that? Or someone had said, hey, you should do this. I just want to remind you today, yes, you can, okay? Yes, you can. You can most definitely do whatever that thing is. I just wanted to give a quick reminder here before we dig in. So why should you start a podcast? Let's start with a couple of those minor details. We talked about why you, you should be doing it, but why you should actually start. Well, here's a couple of reasons. Number one, you've got a story. All of us have a story in us. And usually, more times than not, when we've got the courage, that's the word I'm looking for, the courage to share that story, that story impacts other people. That story becomes an extension of someone else telling their story. Does that make sense? Does that resonate anything to you? Everybody has a story, but when we have enough courage to get out there and share that story, well, then that story starts to become an extension of someone else's story, someone else's dreams becoming a reality. You may have heard that before. Our dreams are attached to someone else's dreams. Part of the people that are part of the mission that we've been set on this thing called life. You want to start a podcast to serve your community. That's right. It's not for you. It's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the content you're creating, the value you're providing, and the community that you're supporting. That community is built through one thing relationships. Well, maybe two consistency. Well, maybe three relationships, consistency, and content. Starting a podcast allows you to create a platform where you can serve this community, where you can build these relationships, where your community can thrive and continue to extract value from what it is that you're sharing. And here's a big thing a lot of people are missing. When you start a podcast, you start a YouTube channel, I don't care what it is. When you do this, it allows you to become a media company as a brand. Traditional media has changed forever the way that we know it. If you want to watch a specific television show that you used to be familiar with on a major network, you can do that. If you don't have cable, you no longer need cable to watch it. You can simply download an app, pay a nominal fee on a monthly basis, and you can cancel any time that you want. Ease of use of being able to absorb content is incredible. There's never been a more incredible time to be able to build platforms on top of these platforms. You launch a podcast, guess what? You're in the app store under the Apple Podcast app, under the Google Podcast app, under the Spotify app, under the Amazon Music app. That's right. Tell Alexa to play your podcast or any podcast that you may like. It's a world that we're living in right now. I always joke that we're living in a world right now where you can be in the shower and run out of shampoo. I don't use shampoo because I don't have any hair. If I did, and I could simply say, Alexa, order me some more shampoo. I hope that didn't order a bunch of shampoo for those of you in the audience. But anyway, anyway it's the world that we're living in. We can turn our brands into a media company. What, what, what do you mean by that, Sebastian? Well, when we're creating content, when we have a business or a brand and then we create content as part of that business brand and we're, and we're building a community around that content, that content can then be monetized. When that content's monetized, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. You're becoming a media company. You control the content. You control the platform. And you control the community because it's yours. Exciting times to be alive. Let's go back to the why for a second. You still may be sitting there scratching your head. It's this whole why thing about Sebastian. Simon Sinek, incredible, uh, incredible uh, communicator, has written some incredible books about the power of why and finding your why. Be sure to look them up. But one of the quotes that really sticks out in my head, has always stuck out in my head ever since I heard it, is people don't care what you do. They care why you do it. That's why I say you've got to get clear 
about anything you're doing regarding business life in general, specifically for, for, for illustration purposes here would be why you're actually starting a podcast. So I can't help you find your why, but these are some quick little brain, you know, brain exercises you can do questions you can ask yourself to get the wheels of creativity and the ideas going. If I had my dream business, I would be doing fill in the blank. I feel most fulfilled when I do this. My deepest desire is to this. So screenshot this, whatever you want to do, write them down if you're taking notes. Great exercise, getting clear on your why. Now let's talk about starting a podcast. First things first, got to come up with a name. Well, first things first is your why, but we've already covered that. So once you're clear on your why, it's time to come up with a name. What are you going to call the show? It doesn't need to be some funky off-the-wall name that only you get. This isn't an AOL screen name. This needs to be something that actually complements your brand. My podcast is called Beyond the Story because I like to sit down and have conversations with people about their story, and I like to go a little beyond what their story is. I want to extract how they actually got there and some different dynamics of the story. It's not the Sebastian Rusk show. There was a point in time I did have my podcast named under my name, and then I had a quick conversation with myself and said, well, what if people don't know who Sebastian Rusk is? Does my name really appeal to the masses? So I rebranded it. Come up with your name, something catchy, something that's relatable, something that complements your brand. Nothing long. Don't, includes the, don't include the words the or podcast. There's not really any need for that. There's other ways to be able to portray the fact that your, uh, your, your, the content you're creating is, in fact, a podcast. Next up, branding. Your podcast cover art is your podcast logo. So this is what you're going to be using on a lot of your branding assets, content. This is what shows up in Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and everywhere else your podcast is distributed to. You can use it for marketing. They're very easily created on Canva.com. You can go over to Fiverr.com, hire a freelancer to do it. They are literally a dime a dozen. If you're feeling thrifty and creative, you can do it on your own in Canva. Either way, just get something that represents your brand. Now, listen, if you are not a graphic designer or you're really bad at Canva or anything design wise, just save yourself the frustration. Number one. Number two, a lot of this is a lot. It's very important a lot of times to check your ego when we're doing design stuff because I see a lot of a lot of stuff that, that could use some love. And people think it's the greatest thing ever because they created it. Listen, everything we create, we think is awesome. But usually we're the only ones that think that. Well, maybe your mom does. But there's not a good large majority. You got to get feedback. Feedback's important. So when you're creating the branding for your podcast, your podcast cover art, you can go to canva.com, you can cre create design, choose podcast cover art. They got tons of templates. Get in there and make it your own. And then send it to people that you trust, not just your close, to, not to your family. They, they like everything that you do. Well, until it's time to quit your job. That's a whole nother webinar. <laughs> anyway, send it to two or three people that you don't currently, or that you currently trust their opinion, but most importantly, they're going to tell you the truth, okay? Next up, equipment. I'm going to run through this crawl, walk, run, sprint. Thought process I have behind podcast equipment. In fact, it was a chapter in my book, and those were the steps that I had created on here. Listen, friends, you can do this with an iPhone, okay? Seasoned podcasters, their ears are probably bleeding with the fact that I'm, say, I'm saying this and it is of the unpopular opinion. But listen, if you're just getting started and you're just trying to get a proof of concept down and say, hey, is my, is my idea even valid? Does it even make sense for me to start a podcast? Picking up your phone, downloading an app like Anchor or pulling up your voice memos and recording an audio clip and uploading it to a podcast host and putting together your own intro and outro for proof of concept is not is grossly underrated okay because it can be done that that's that that that's the proper way of me trying to explain being able to podcast from your phone if you're trying to get your proof of concept you know anchor is a great platform for beginners to figure out Am I really a podcaster? Can I really actually do this? So 
If you use corded headphones with a microphone, plug them right. I don't recommend wireless AirPods. Bluetooth will break your heart every single time. But if you use a corded uh, headphones right into the bottom here with a mic, quiet room, no noise, no tile floors, you can record a podcast on your iPhone. Samsung users, you're on your own. I don't know if how do you record stuff on Samsung, but I'm sure there's a way. And I'm not, I don't mean on your own. I say that with love. I promise. But get an iPhone. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's some sort of voice recorder. And you, by more, most importantly, you can use Anchor on an Android too. This is the most common piece of equipment beginning podcasters get is a Blue Yeti mic. That's a Blue Snowball, way old school. I got one of those bad boys right here. That's actually how I started podcasting way back when. Both are great options. Both travel very well. And the cool part about them is they are plug and play. So you take them out of the box. You literally plug them into your USB. You make sure that Zoom or however you're recording recognizes that as your audio device. It's real easy. Choose USB Blue Yeti mic and you're off to the races. It'll improve your audio quality significantly and it works with any computer. You can't plug these into your phone. I guess you could. There's some sort of adapter I guess you could use, but I haven't found any success being able to do that. But this is your uh, crawl was use your iPhone. Walk is USB mic. Run would be to upgrade to a receiver. So a podcast um uh, a, uh, a USB receiver. This one right here is called the Focus Right Scarlet Studio. You may have seen it around. Very, very popular. It's got two XLR uh, outlets. Uh, it has one that has one XLR outlet too. And uh, it's up to you. If it's just you. You only need one. If you and a co-host, you probably need two. It's a difference of like, I don't know, 50 or 60 bucks, whether you have one outlet or two. They do this, sell this as a combo. I'm not a giant fan of this XLR mark that comes from Focusrite, but I am a giant fan of this USB um, uh, transmitter, or, excuse me, receiver box. This box plugs right into your computer via USB. The mic plugs right into the XLR here with this cable. And then if you choose to use headphones, which you should, because you can hear yourself, can monitor yourself plugs right into here too you can buy it as a bumble bun, bun, bumble a bundle uh, or you can buy them separately all available on amazon if you go to podcastlaunchlab.com click on podcast equipment recommendations that's my entire store of uh, recommendations for podcast equipment sprinting sprinting with podcast equipment if you're like i'm ready to do this i'm going all in i want the best of the best the best of the best in my opinion for a home studio office studio Creative Studio is the Rodecaster Pro, uh, and that's what you're looking at right here, Rodecaster, and it has four XLR mic outlets, so four mics can go into this, headphone jack, Bluetooth access, people can call in, you can patch them in from a phone call right into the board, that's what I'm using here, as you can see, pod mic, if you're listening to this, it's a pod mic. Uh, going right into my Rodecaster. The Rodecaster plugs directly into your computer via USB. Very easy to use. It may look complicated, but it's not. All these wonderful, colorful buttons are sound effects. Very useful. And you literally start recording by pressing the little red button right here. It's going to run you between seven, eight hundred bucks. Rodecaster itself is five hundred and ninety nine bucks. Pod mics are a hundred. Headphones are like sixty bucks. And then a mic stand. I figure another 30 or 40 bucks for accessories, but you're looking at about seven, 800 bucks. So that's your crawl, walk, run, sprint strategy with uh, podcast equipment. Okay. Let's talk about podcast hosting. Next up. So we got a name, we got our why, we got our name, uh, we've got our branding. Now we've got our equipment. Now let's figure out where we're going to host our site because this is very important. This is where your podcast files live. So think of YouTube. You'd upload video files, that's where the video files live. But in this case, it, they're audio files. So Libsyn, Buzzsprout, Simplecast, Anchor, if you start, you're a beginner and you're just getting started, um, that, that, they would host your audio files, but they would also give you an RSS feed, RSS feed URL. RSS feed stands for really simple syndication. You take that URL and you submit it to Apple Podcast, into Overcast, into Spotify, and Amazon Music, and Pandora. And once you set up distribution by submitting your RSS feed to all of these listening and distribution platforms, your podcast is then set up for distribution. So the only thing you need to do every time you record and edit a new episode is upload that episode 
to your podcast host, whether it's Libsyn or Bob Sprout or Simplecast. They all function the same way. To have your podcast, a place for your podcast episodes to live, a place for you to be given an RSS feed that you, so that you can submit them uh, to your distribution platforms. The distribution only needs to be set up one time uh, with Apple Podcasts. That way, every time you upload a new podcast episode, it gets distributed everywhere. So as you can see here, it's your podcast host. It's your RSS feed. You upload one episode and it gets distributed here every single time by simply doing one thing, which is upload your podcast to your podcast host. A podcast host will also give you a podcast website too. So you can register a domain name. You can point that domain name to your podcast website. So when people say, how do I find your podcast? You tell them, go to beyondthestorypodcast.com and they can subscribe wherever their little heart desires. I always say go to my podcast website, beyondthestorypodcast.com, shameless plug, because then you can choose wherever you would like to subscribe to the podcast because maybe you're an Android user and you don't listen on Apple. I don't want to send you to Apple because you're not going to be able to get there anyway. Maybe you listen to your podcast on Spotify. I don't want to tell you to go to Apple. I don't want to tell you to go to the podcast, so on and so forth. Let's talk about interviews. Interviews. I always use the Larry King rule of thumb, which is 80-20. 80% of your guests talking and sharing, 20% of you interacting and asking questions. 80-20. goes back to that old adage that your mom used to tell you, or your parents used to tell you when you were little. Sebastian, you think you're talking too much? You are. Same applies as adults. Same exact thing is going to apply with podcast interviews. You want to be strategic with who you're interviewing. Can you do business with this person eventually? Is this person going to provide massive value to your audience? Is this individual willing to share the content, the podcast interview after the fact? Are they open to further discussions for opportunities? Make sure all of these things are taking place in a podcast interview. If you've got other questions about how to conduct a podcast interview, you can check out my YouTube channel where I actually have some videos that explain exactly how to interview someone on their podcast. You can just go to youtube.com forward slash podcast launch lab. Yet another shameless plug. Marketing. All right. So here's how you market a podcast. Not the easiest task in town, but I can tell you right now, the best way to market a podcast and have it grow is to record and upload as many episodes as you can on a weekly basis. Next, you're going to be make you're, you're going to be strategic with your guest strategy. Again, like I just got done talking about, is, is your guest willing to share the episode they were on? You're getting exposed to their audience when they do that. Creating micro content, creating Instagram story content, like this image you see, see right here. Being able to include a link on Instagram stories for people to go directly to your podcast website or to the, or to the actual URL of the podcast episode that you're promoting on your podcast website. Uh, running ads, you can promote the post, you can boost the post, nothing crazy, spend a dollar, two bucks a day, three bucks a day, five bucks a day, market it for 10, 20, 30 days, it's entirely up to you. Uh, but um, this allows you to gain some additional traction and reach some people that you may not currently uh, be reaching. So marketing your podcast, that's really in a nutshell, your guest micro content where your guests share it and running ads. So what else is possible? What else is possible? That is the basics in, of, of starting a podcast. There's a lot more involved with that, but I wanted to add some context and give you some, some at least ide an idea of what it takes to start a podcast. Now, what else is possible is that you can solve all of your social media content problems with your podcast, okay? How are you gonna do that? Well, let me explain. You can repurpose your content. Record a podcast episode, edit a podcast episode. Maybe you went live for, to record that podcast episode. So great, we went live for a podcast episode, one piece of content. We recorded the podcast episode by default because we're taking the archive of the live. We've got the archive video from the live uh, podcast interview that we did. We've got the final produced episode. We've got the ability to repurpose the video, the audio, images, so micro videos, audiograms, graphics, blog posts, you can transcribe your podcast, chop it up, turn it into a blog post, phenomenal for SEO purposes. Graphics, just like the one you saw a couple of slides ago, where is it at, right here. Create images just like that in Canva with absolute ease or hire someone to do it for you. There's a plethora of uh, freelancers available online that would be more than willing to help you out 
audiograms, great tools. I'm going to go, I'll go over one in just a minute here uh, that you can create that. An audiogram is an image with audio slapped on the back of it, saved as a movie file. Okay. Here's some examples. Ready? Here we go. Micro videos, just like you're seeing right here. This is a video. It's just not playing, but that's a screenshot of a video. I create all of these videos within a platform called capwing.com, or maybe it's kapwing.com. I don't know, but all I know is it creates these nifty videos. It's got an entire, actually kapwing, I use like a 10th of all the features available on kapwing.com. Cost me like 20 bucks a month. My team loves me for it because there's, it's template city and all they have to do is go in there, create new templates and just fill in the blanks with the new content as we're creating and allowing us to streamline that process. Cap, kapwing.com. Audiograms. Headliner.com. Uh, I think it's headliner.com. Headliner. That's their logo right there. I probably should know that already. Here, let me see here. Headliner.app. Sorry. Headliner.app. All these URL extensions these days. My goodness. This allows you to create an image in Canva, just like you see an image right here. So I created the image in Canva. And then I went over to Headliner and I went through their audiogram wizard that walks me through. I, I go, I choose, you can type in your, your RSS feed. You can even search for your podcast. It'll pull it up. It'll populate the episodes. You can choose the episode that'll walk you through the audiogram wizard to actually choose the clips that you want, the audio clip that you want to use for the audiogram. It can be as long or short as you want. Usually an audiogram is between 20 and 60 seconds long. So I create the image in Canva, go back to Headliner, uh, um, go through the audiogram wizard. By the way, there's a free version of Headliner. There's a $12 a month version. They're both worth. I've been with them forever and a day. It's a great tool to use, especially for podcasters. Again, another platform I only use probably half of the features available. So I'm sure you can have a field day with all your content going, oh, I had no idea I could do this here uh, with Headliner and Kapwing. So I, I create the image, go through the audiogram wizard, choose the clip I want, upload the image from Canva, and it exports. And these lines are actually active. They're squiggly lines when you press play. You've probably seen an audiogram before. So we've got micro video piece of content. At bare minimum, you should be doing one micro video per podcast episode. Bare minimum, you should be doing at least one audiogram per episode. New episode drops on Monday. That's the episode. Post an image. Two days later, post a, a micro video. Call to action, listen to the episode. Two days later, post an audiogram, call to action. Then rinse and repeat that process. Does that make sense? Creating images. Back to Canva. Go in here, create images just like this. You can include your cover art that you've already created, your guest name, any branding on here. This can all be done through Canva. If you're not using Canva, you are missing out. That's the best $12 or $13, bucks, however much it is. On a monthly basis, you can spend, and it literally will turn anybody into a uh, graphic designer or well, very, very close to a graphic designer, as close as you're going to get, or again, find somebody that can help you out. A blog post, create a blog post. You can transcribe your podcast by using tools like otter.ai. Otter can transcribe a Zoom meeting in real time. I use it for transcriptions. I use it for closed captions. If you ever wanted to go, how do I get an SRT file? Those are your captions for your video. Well, just upload your video to otter.ai and you can export those SRT, those are your captions, and then upload them into tools like Kapwing, and it'll add them pretty accurate too. Even though they use AI, it's about 98% accurate. You do want to give it a once over to make sure that you're not cussing at someone, but it's pretty accurate to make sure that uh, your, whatever Otter spits back out for your translations, closed captions, et cetera, is accurate. Um, Otter.ai can be used to transcribe your podcast, another great tool for uh, SEO purposes for your podcast, and also to be able to cater to hearing impaired and people, uh, individuals that may not be able to consume your content by listening to it, uh, but can do that by you transcribing it. So uh, otter.ai is a great way to do that. You can also turn that transcription into a blog post. Jarvis.ai will write blog posts for you. Jarvis.ai is the tool that will write, helps you um, it utilize artificial intelligence to generate uh, content, headlines, ideas, outlines, stories, start of stories, blog posts, et cetera. Jarvis.ai is that tool. Once you're creating all this content, don't think it's realistic. You're going to create it multiple times a week and you're going to post it multiple times a week and you're going to be consistent with it. You want to put together a strategy or find someone who's going to be able to help you with that strategy of being able to create the content, create the strategy, create the content, schedule that content, and uh, move on with your day. 
that's going to be your best course of action for being able to achieve not only your podcast goals, but your social media content goals. You've got to be realistic with this entire process. Got to have a strategy, got to be consistent, got to know what's realistic for you. Well, realistic is I can put the strategy in place. I can commit to the work. I can know the work involved. And if I don't like doing it, I'm going to find somebody who does. I promise you there's somebody out there that loves doing the things that you hate doing. Get them off your plate immediately because you're not going to wake up one day and go, you know what? I no longer hate doing this. Let's get started today. It's just not going to happen. So how do I do all this? Sorry, my nose was itching like crazy. Of course, in the middle of a talk, probably is irrelevant if someone's listening to this elsewhere, speaking of audio or visual. But uh, so how? How can I do this? You can. You got two options. How do I do this whole podcast content thing? Got a couple options here. One, you can do it yourself. So if you're a do-it-yourself first, strap on your tool bed. I got this. I'm going to lock myself in my office, in my room, in my living room for a weekend, and we're going to knock this out, put together a plan, and we're going to go take massive action. Completely possible, completely unrealistic. I'm speaking from experience. I just know to think that you're going to be everything to everyone, including yourself, pertaining to a podcast strategy, launching it, recording it, producing it, being consistent with it, creating content around it, putting a content strategy together, being consistent with that. It's just not sustainable. Why? Because there's a little thing called life that gets involved. And the only thing that we're not, they're not making more of is time. So between life and family and here and 2020 and this and stuck at home and Zoom and businesses and closing and starting and stopping and there's a lot going on with life. So you need to remain realistic. Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. More realistic a- approach, kind of a selfish suggestion, if you will, hiring an expert, someone who in fact can give you a clear cut game plan, strategy, hold your hand through that process and, and, wa- and walk you through the finish line and continue to support you ongoing. And most important, hold you accountable for being able to do it. If you want to do it yourself, my YouTube channel exists, and I also wrote a book last December. Uh, so my second book, it's called Podcast Suck. If you don't have one, it is, in fact, a step-by-step guide, an expanded version of this talk, if you will, on how to start a podcast. Don't just read the book. Do what it says. You can pick up a copy wherever books are sold, or you can go to podcastsuck.com. Yes, another shameless plug, but it's part of the talk, so just go with it, will you? The book includes all 13 steps that I use here at the Podcast Launch Lab with our clients to be able to get them to the finish line in 90 days or less by starting a podcast. It also covers a lot about mindset, commitment, what's involved, doing the work, podcast marketing, podcast equipment. I go in depth about the crawl, walk, run strategy of actually starting a podcast. So pick up a copy of the book. Um, If you think that, hey, maybe, uh, sure, I could read a book. Oh, also, I I didn't include a slide for this, but I did talk about it earlier in my YouTube channel. Both of these are an absolute labor of love because I feel it's my responsibility that when we know something, when we know more than the average person about something, it is our responsibility to get that word out in some form or fashion. Not everyone's a fit for us here at the Podcast Launch Lab. Not everyone's a fit for me to take on as a client, but everyone is a fit to learn on their own and figure out if it's a fit for them. And that's the reason that I write books. That's the reason that I speak on the topic. That's the reason that I do events like this. That's the reason that I started my YouTube channel a few years back that I'm deeply passionate about. That's that is uh, youtube.com forward slash podcast launch lab. YouTube.com forward slash podcast launch lab. There's an entire library there. Everything you could ever imagine about or question about starting a podcast is on that YouTube channel. I'm very interactive over there. I respond to questions and comments and all that fun stuff. So those are two incredible resources, in my opinion, not just because I created them, but because I get feedback from people. People saying, hey, listen, I, wrote, I read your book. I finally believe myself. I watch your YouTube channel. I binged watch the entire thing and I want to start a podcast now or I am actually starting a podcast now. Those are the two options for the do-it-yourselfers out there. Um, If you look, if you think that you want to hire someone to help get you to the finish line, if you think maybe you want to work with me uh, one-on-one to help take you from idea to iTunes in 90 days or less, I'd love to have a conversation with you about what's possible and seeing if your idea, your concept, and, and your strategy is a fit for the program that we have. It's not. Everyone is not a fit for the Podcast Launch Lab program, and that's not some sort of sales tactic. But someone is. Uh, there, there is a specific. Um, science that we've put, you know, we've put behind what it takes to actually qualify somebody for our program. And I'd love to have a conversation with you uh, to see if you're a fit for that. 
within the podcast launch program, it gives you everything you need in order to start a podcast. We help you create the name, strategy, everything we've mentioned here, uh, branding, your intro, your outro, teaser, your background music, your podcast hosting, your distribution, and helping you plan your first seven episodes, as well as your launch strategy. You get to work one-on-one with me. It is a done-for-you, done-with-you podcast launch solution, done with for you, meaning you don't have to do any of the heavy lifting and the production editing. My team handles all of that. And again, I walk you literally to the finish line on what's possible with all of that. So this isn't a big giant 45 minute sales pitch. I just wanted to let you guys know what's possible. You can totally do this on your own. You can totally have your team do it. Um, You can watch my YouTube channel, read my book, message me on Instagram with questions, 100% possible. Um, And again, there's a lot of people out there that go, listen, I know I could change the oil in my car too, but I choose to drive around the corner and pay 50 bucks and have someone else do it and move on with my day. Same applies to anything that we want to do, especially when it comes to creating something in the digital landscape, like uh, starting a podcast. So with that, that is all I've got for you today regarding helping you better understand what's possible. If you take a picture of that QR code, just like, well, modern day of sitting down at a restaurant to look at the menu. That QR code will take you directly to my uh, uh, directly to my calendar. That's the word I'm looking for, uh, and you can schedule a call. I'll talk to anybody about what's possible with starting a podcast and improving your digital strategy with starting your podcast and also solving all of your co- social media content problems through that process. So I believe now we've got a few minutes uh, to take some questions. If you don't know how to work a QR code, you can also go to Podcast Launch Lab now. Dot com. But I do sure do appreciate everybody's attention and this opportunity to Aaron and the team at uh, Digi, Digi Marcon. Say that fast three times, Kenneth. Uh, but uh, sure is a pleasure to be here. You got it. So I got a, I got a few questions that were sent over to me. How do you know if someone, if their content's great? How do you go? And that's a good question for you. When you're working with somebody to help them tell their story, how do they know if their content is worthy of listening? Well, sometimes that inner critic starts to go in overdrive when we're creating content. I'm going to sound like crap. I'm going to look like crap. Nobody's going to listen. I, nobody's going to like it. I don't know if I could do it. I'm not a podcaster. I'm not like you. I don't sound like you, Sebastian. I don't look like you. To that, I say, well, lucky you. But the inner critic does start going bananas. So we help do as part of the process of our program, see what that looks like. Like I said earlier on, podcasting is a lot like, a lot like life. So there's some tuning and some reprogramming that we need to do uh, internally our mindset, thought process, and our belief system to tweak those things. How do we know we're creating good content? Well, is the content valuable? Can you, the person walk away from that content and go, you know what? I, I didn't know that, but I do now. That's the long and short answer. Help them stop thinking like Stuart Smart, Smalley. Sure. Remember, I'm, I'm uh, what is it used to say? I'm, I'm not good enough and gosh darn it people, or I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and, and gosh, gosh darn, darn it people, people like me. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, so here's another question I got from someone. Do you recommend advertising on social search display? What? I, I recommend testing out simple dollar a day, $2 a day, $3 a day strategies on Instagram, promoting the post, boosting the post, going after your target audience and see what kind of traction you can get. I've gotten some decent Pinterest is another great platform where you can create a piece of content, create a board, put a pin on that board, a link on there. That's great for, 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 for additional traffic and SEO purposes. Uh, and you can also run, they got a phenomenal ads program. They're very picky with what they allow you to advertise on their platform on there. So you have to fit within the, within the landscape of Pinterest, but Pinterest, uh, Facebook, Instagram, I can't really speak to Twitter ads and LinkedIn ads, but I would like to think that they, you know, they're, they're, they're comparable, but test, test, test. Don't spend a bunch of money. Don't commit long-term. You can get in there, you know, dollar a day, a couple bucks a day and test it out and find out if, you know, if, it gives you analytics. All the numbers are there. Does it work? If it doesn't work, stop the ad. If it works, you know, 10 exit. Agreed. So you, uh, how should someone, another question, how should someone go about looking at a podcasting if they are a brand and, and not a personal brand, but a corporate brand? A corporate brand should say, listen, we're already marketing our brand. We have been marketing our brand. It's our job, our duty, and our responsibility to continue that process. But where are we at right now with content? Where are, we, where are the eyeballs at? How are people consuming content? Are people turning on the radio? No, probably not a good idea to dump money to traditional radio. Are people listening to podcasts? Yes, they are. 
great. With that being said, can we gain exposure by advertising on other people's podcasts? And what's possible with us being able to create a podcast for our brand? What's possible with us being able to create a podcast and become a media company as a brand, as a corporation? Here's another thing that happens in big brands and corporations these days. We're getting a lot of work from these two, our internal podcasts. The brands are so gigantic. There's so many people within the organization that that internal mm. memo just ain't cutting it anymore. Creating an internal podcast allows the powers that be, the people in in, in charge, in, in leadership, to communicate with the entire organization, allow that organization to consume content at their leisure. So there's a laundry list of reasons that companies and brands should be creating a, a, a podcast for their brand. But the number one thing should be to become a media company to be able to get the message out internally and external, externally to be able to create a, a repurpose social media content repurpose strategy and really to build new relationships, interview people that you already do business with. Who's in your target audience of that business and corporation that you can be having conversations with that you could eventually turn into a conversation or an opportunity to do business with these people. And it becomes a, you know, a, a low to mid-level uh, lead gen for your sales funnel. Let you kind of elaborate because now I'm reading this question. The next question somebody sent over, uh, you touched on a little bit, but it said, "What social channels do you find are best for promoting a show?" And I and I think about this uh, even further. You know, not just taking out ads. When you look at engagement for those kind of social posts, where do you see the return on promoting it? I know you mentioned Buffer and Sprout Social and all these to put to put out those kind of promotions, but I, I think a question that even resonates with me is looking at engagement uh, and how that possibly could affect, you know, your your show exposure, if you will. I, I think the best way to grow a podcast is to be able to, to record as many episodes as you can on a weekly basis with content that people actually are searching for. And then combining that with micro content, micro videos, audiograms, mm -hmm. images that reflect or brand the podcast and act as a piece, an additional piece of social media content. And then being able to go, you know, in with engagement uh, with your existing audience and then also applying what we just got to talking about, a boosting post, a promoting post and using, I think Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, grossly underrated, grossly underrated, rapidly growing platform for creators. So LinkedIn, number one, Instagram, number two, and then Facebook as a, as a, you know, a, a short but distant third. Uh, another question, you mentioned some of this earlier, but elaborate, if you will, on promoting a show. And I, something you mentioned, I, I, I laugh about because I see it all the time as well. The, the value of trying to get someone or the value of someone else sharing a content piece you created featuring them, it's worth its weight in gold, but a lot of people won't do it. Yeah, they won't do it. So you got to get a, you just got to, you know, it's a, it's a gentleman shake. Uh, at the, you know, at the beginning of, Hey, will you share this? And most people will just lie to your face. So don't <laughs> depend on that strategy. It's always gravy. Right. You know, it's gravy yeah. that they share it. And if they don't, well, clearly they're not good at keeping their word. And that's just, you know, that's just how the chips fall, but don't bank on that happening. But if it does, it's gravy. Be responsible for what you can control. You can control how many episodes you're recording You can control how much content you're creating and repurposing out of those podcast episodes. You can, and you can control your consistency and commitment to the game of creating content. I was just in uh, Jupiter, West Palm in Miami a couple of weeks ago. How's the weather today? Perfect. Uh, a little cloudy, but not bad. In the yeah. upper 70s, low 80s. Yeah. Better than Minnesota. Yes, it is. It is indeed. Well, Sebastian, thank you very much. Great session. Uh, enjoy speaking with you as always and have an amazing day and good rest of the week. And I hope everybody will check in with Sebastian there on the screen. I appreciate it, Sebastian. Hey, thanks so much for uh, the opportunity, Kenneth. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for being in attendance and sticking around and listening to me. I think you were listening. I don't know. There's a bunch of people here in the audience. But I appreciate each and every one of you, and I really hope you're leaving this talk. You know, at least one or two things that you did not know before you jumped into this session. I remember one last thing. Podcasts suck if you don't have one. Bye, friends.